I've been testing out Remote Play, PS5 Remote Play on the Steam Deck for a little bit here now to see how stable it is and how usable it is, at least for me, on the Steam Deck. So I actually am not a big fan of using Remote Play at all on any device because it's heavily dependent on having a strong internet connection, just like cloud-based gaming. And I don't like that as well, at least not yet. I wanna see it develop better. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my experience using Remote Play and how I set it up and everything pretty much that I've gone through in setting it up. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm gonna share it all, and I know it's gonna be good for some people, but I don't think it's going to be perfect for everyone. Some people are gonna find that it works better for their situation, while others will find that it does not. And you might even find that you prefer to play your games directly off your console than on the Steam Deck streaming it, because like I said, you'll see throughout this video the good and the bad. So you'll be able to decide yourself if it's actually worth considering. Let's go ahead and check out Remote Play on the Steam Deck. The process to get it all set up is actually pretty easy and does not take up a lot of time at all. I used a guide that I found online, which I'll have linked down below, but I'll also quickly walk you guys through how I got it done in this video. There's some important things that you want to note before setting up Remote Play on the Steam Deck. First, you want to make sure that you go into the settings menu on the console, which for me is a PS5, and then check that Remote Play is enabled, and also check to make sure that enable turning on PS5 from network is turned on after this you want to connect the console to the internet using a wired ethernet connection not a wi-fi connection you can connect your deck through wi-fi but you don't want to connect your ps5 using a wi-fi connection one more thing to note is that remote play won't work if you turn the console off completely so you want to make sure that it's in rest mode i'm only going to be setting it up for use within my home network because that's the only place where i plan on using it and expect to get the best performance. But I'll also include a link on how to set it up for access outside your home network in case you wanna do that. To begin the setup process, you're gonna to have to switch to desktop mode and then install Chiaki from there. So I'm gonna provide a link down in the description to the page that you guys see on the screen right now. So it's a very simple process where you'd have to copy and paste to install Chiaki and then go from there. Once you're done installing Chiaki, the next thing to do is connect it with your PlayStation Network account. So this just involves copying some more code and pasting into the console. This will then create a link that you're going to have to go to in order to get your PlayStation Network ID. next thing you want to do here is register your PS5 and what you'll need for that is your PSN account ID which we just got and a remote play access pin which you'll need to get from your PS5 or your PS4. The next thing we're going to do here is set up automating Chiaki for deck to launch. So this can be done super easily just like the rest of the things we've done. All you've got to do is copy some code and paste it into console and follow the prompts on the screen. That's the last thing that you've got to do to really get it to work. So now all you've got to do left is all aesthetics. So this part is about adding logos, adding background images and all of that cool stuff to make it look good. So this is not important. It's all optional, but it's all part of it. It'll definitely make it easier for you to identify remote play when you're in game mode. Now that we've got everything set up, we're back to game mode here. You can see we've got Chiaki for deck and we've got all the images looking good. Everything's all set up. All that's left now is to set up the controller configurations and mapping. And 
As for the best stream settings to use, I don't think I found any specific one that worked perfectly, but I went through all kinds of different iterations. Like I mixed up 1080p, 720p, and 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, all these different numbers and all that. And honestly, they were all pretty much the same. Everything was pretty similar, but I ended up sticking with 720p at 60 frames per second with 50,000 for bit rate and um, automatic for the audio buffer. I also made sure to set VA API for video decoder. The Chiaki for deck setup procedure I just went through will only let you use remote play within your home network, which means only playing when you're at home. If you plan on playing from outside your home network, there's a few more things that you'll have to do, but I'll leave a link to that down in the description below because it's not something that I'll highly recommend due to how difficult it might be to find a good internet connection. Okay, let's talk about some of the good things that you get with remote play. So with it, you'll be able to access your PlayStation game library, which is pretty much the only thing you can't do on the Steam Deck natively, especially the newer exclusives like God of War Ragnarok, which take a little while before getting ported to PC and sometimes. There's also issues like what happened recently with The Last of Us Part 1. With remote play, you'll be able to play all of those exclusives and anything else on your console. This also means you don't have to wait for or even rebuy the same game when it does finally make it to PC. As you may or may not know, remote play essentially lets you stream your games from your console, which means you won't need to worry about the Steam Deck being able to handle heavy AAA titles, since the PS5 or the PS4 will be doing all the heavy lifting throughout. This also means that you get zero fan noise and a longer battery life playing the same games through remote play versus natively on the deck itself. Now that we got the good out the way, the bad thing that you want to note is that the most important thing to remember and what might discourage most people from using remote play is that the entire thing is fully dependent on having access to an internet connection. And not just that, you also need one that's pretty solid or you'll run into a lot of issues. To use remote play, you're also going to need a PS5 or a PS4 console, and this can definitely discourage anyone who doesn't already have one. Personally, I think remote play is only worth using when you're at home where you've got a stronger network connection with a lot less traffic, and you're also closer to your console as well as your router because the further you are from them, the less reliable the connection will be. Also, most public internet connections tend to have a lot of traffic, so they're usually very unreliable as well. From my experience, I found that while playing from within my home network, I still frequently get flashes on the screen and other little annoyances here and there. And trust me when I say I've got a solid home internet setup. For my home Wi-Fi, I've got some Unify Long Range Wi-Fi 6 access points. And no matter how close or far that I get from the router, I still get the same issues with flashes and whatnot. The funny thing is I didn't notice any latency. And this has been great since it's the only reason why this is even usable. There's settings within the Chiaki remote play software which can be adjusted, but there wasn't a single combination that I tried that was able to give me a smooth gameplay experience all the way through. Something else to note is that the Steam Deck does not have Wi-Fi 6 capabilities, so it doesn't matter that I've got a Wi-Fi 6 router, it'll still be limited to Wi-Fi 5. If you're wondering why this is important, what you need to know is that with Wi-Fi 6 on the Steam Deck, things like remote play and cloud gaming would have worked so much better, making gaming on the go even better. For me, I only plan on using this once in a while as I'd rather play directly off the PS5 most of the time anyways. And I don't want to go through all the possible connection issues that come with remote play trying to do it on the deck. I'll probably end up using it only for PS exclusives that aren't yet available on PC. For everything else, I pretty much download them off my PC, so I still prefer downloading onto the handheld as well and playing natively without all the barriers that come with remote play. Now, my case is going to be different from others out there, and I've even heard that some people don't experience the same issues with remote play as I do, but let's be honest, the concept isn't solid yet, and there's so many factors that come into play when trying to achieve a seamless gameplay experience through remote play, whether that's on the Steam Deck or on your phone. I'm sure most people's biggest obstacle with using remote play on the Steam Deck or anywhere else at all would be finding a good and a stable internet connection. Anyway, that's my experience so far with using remote play on the Steam Deck. Let me know down below what your experience has been with it so far, if you've tried it out, and if not, go ahead and try it out and let me know if remote play is something you'd use on your Steam Deck 
or if you prefer to just game natively. That's all for this one, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching it if you made it to this point. It's Tommy, and I'll catch you all next time.